Good morning students, welcome to the world of animals. These animals are special, they are invertebrates. Some of them are not visible to you, so I have brought them on your blackboard. Why? Because they are microscopic in nature. We can see them under high power of microscope on the slides. Well, to study about them, I have drawn them on the board. They are unicellular, they have an irregular shaped body and locomotory organ, which is not fixed. It is known as pseudopodia or false foot like structure. It helps them to locomote and there is a presence of vacuole, special type of vacuole whose volume changes. So, we call it as contractile vacuole. It belongs to the kingdom protista under phylum protozoa. Right. So, this is amoeba proteus. Next, the other slide which carries hydra has an appearance like this. I have magnified it for you. You can see that it has got a bunch of tentacles. Where is it present? Around the mouth and this part is a bit swollen up portion. We call it as hypostome. So, these tentacles you know they contain some stinging cells here. So, that they can paralyze the prey once they enter inside the body of hydra. So, they have a soft body, they are diploblastic, diploblastic meaning they have ectoderm and endoderm. The body is elongated and sac like, presence of tentacles and stinging cells. These are the unique features of hydra. And the third one, third one is not microscopic. I will show it to you students. Its name is fasciola hepatica. Fasciola hepatica, this body is triangular in shape and it resembles a leaf like structure. It looks like a leaf. The body is covered with cuticle and there are presence of two suckers because they are parasites. There are two suckers, you know. So, that helps them to suck the nutrients which they require for their growth. And here, this is the actual specimen. To see properly, I am placing it in front for you. So, this is liver fluke, it is a parasite. So, we continue our studies, study with some more invertebrates in front of us. Now, these two specimens that you see, they belong to nematodes or nematelmenthes or round worms as you call it. They are parasites, they are endoparasites. What do we call them as? Ascaries. They are long, slender, bilaterally symmetrical and they have got a thin membrane. They have got suckers also to get hold of the nutrients from your body. Just a significant thing to note, look at the ends of these two. One has got a notch, another one does not have a notch. Who is that? Who has a notch? Is it the male or female? Watch it carefully. This is how we identify them as either male or female. Right. Next, we move on to annelids. These two are the members of annelids. What is the significant feature? Like the previous one, they are also bilaterally symmetrical, they are triploblastic, but here what is the unique feature? They have got metamoric segmentation, which is very prominent in hirudinaria. This is leech. This specimen shows compartmentalization. Here you can see the segments very clearly and they have got suckers also here. This is a big leech, is not it? And this is the common earthworm. For an earthworm, it has got a prostomium, it has got a clitalium also and it is a farmer's friend. This goes with these two annelids. Fine. Next, the members who are coming in front of you, they belong to arthropods, but these three belong to three different classes. Arthropod can be grouped and into four classes. Right. So, this is prawn, the most common prawn. You might have eaten shrimps, lobsters and prawns. This is the prawn. 
Now, it belongs to arthropod, these three members they belong to arthropod. The unique feature is that they have got jointed legs, all these three have got jointed legs and their body is separated into head, thorax and abdominal structures. Prawn appears in your fresh water, in ponds, lakes as well as in the swamps, right. But here this abdomen has got six segments and you will see the head portion in prawn cephalothorax. Cephalothorax is covered by carpace C A R P A C E okay. and this is silkworm the whole life cycle is there in front of you. It has got several stages through which it undergoes till it becomes bombyx mori the adult. It is a very, very economically important insect for us. It belongs to your class insecta. What are the characteristics of this class? Body is divided into head, thorax, abdomen. It has got a pair of wings coming off from your pro and mesothorax area and six legs are there or three pairs of jointed legs are present. And the next one, next one is the life cycle of yet another member of arthropod. What is it? Honey bee. Honey bee gives us honey, correct? So, it is also another economical important what? Insect. So, it belongs to the class insecta and what is its name? Apis, genus is Apis indica. Apis indica, it has got jointed appendages in the small adult if you are able to see, three pairs of legs are there, two pairs of wings are there and it is uh, the queen only lays the eggs for us. The queen lays the eggs for us. The honey bees colony has got both drones, worker bees as well as a queen bee. Then the next phylum, the next member is a garden snail, correct? Some of you might have seen it. If your soil is alkaline, you will see them a lot. Now, where is it? This is the home that they carry on their back. It is a calcareous shell and the actual organisms, if I can show it to you, they are hiding inside. As soon as you touch them, they cur curl up inside their home. It is very soft and jelly like. A stripoblastic dough and how does it walk? It walks with the help of a muscular foot and it walks so slowly, very slowly with the help of its tube foot. And how does it feed itself? It has got a radula for feeding. So, this is mollusk or apple snail is one of its member. The next one in front of you is starfish. Starfish, why is it called a star? The appearance is like a star, is not it? Wow, what do you see? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 arms jutting out and it has got suckers all over. You can see there is a vascular, water vascular system present, something radiating out from the center. From the center, there are canals which are radiating out to all the arms and as the water percolates through this pore, it, this water circulation plays a very important role in their life. It helps them to transport nutrients, it helps them to transport the respiratory gases and it also helps them in excretion, it helps them in locomotion too. So, the unique feature of this uh, member is that presence of five arms, there are suckers water vascular system is present, they can also regenerate. If one of the arms get cut from the center, they can even regenerate and they belong to the phylum. What do you guess? What could be the phylum B? The phylum is Echinodermata. The name of Echinodermata is uh, symbolic. Why? Because they consist of spiny members and they are ugly members, echinodermata, from the skin the spines come out, echinus meaning spiny. So, this is where the invertebrate world comes to an end children and then we are going off to uh, the synopsis of the entire 
animal kingdom. So, children this is the synopsis of the animal kingdom, we are classifying them depending upon their level of organization or presence of notochord and body cavity. So, the unique member of protozoa is amoeba which we have discussed, phylum porifera who is a member sponges, nidaria consists of sea anemone where we had discussed hydra on the board and it is followed by platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes consists of tape worms or your flat worms which consists of liver fluke. Do you remember I had shown you fasciola hepatica, it is a member of this flat worm. It consists of only one free living animal that is planaria, but you read about a parasite liver fluke. Next we moved on to nematodes, we call nematoda by phylum Astelminthes too. Astelminthes are a group of round worms. So, we had learnt about Ascaris followed by Annelida, the phylum which includes earthworm, it includes your leeches followed by Arthropoda. Arthropoda consists of prawns, spiders and insects like silk moth and honey bee. Mollusca phylum it consists of animals like octopus, but we had shown you snail, apple snail, it is another smaller member of this mollusk. Last one, the member of the invertebrates which we have in hand is that of starfish, it belongs to phylum echinodermata. The last phylum which is there is hemichordata under invertebrates. Balanoglossus. Yes, the last phylum goes to chordates. Chordates, we are going to divide it under two subphylums. What is it? One is urochordate, another one is cephalochordates. These members are mostly marine and depending upon the position of the notochord, if they are present, uh, you know, they are present somewhere in their body in their life cycle what do we call it as in the tail urochordate, in the head area we call it as cephalochordates. Next comes the world of fishes, fishes the vertebrates another subphylum is vertebrata. As we, we as we are not privileged to keep the vertebrates in our lab, so we do not love to show it, but we love to share it with you by the chart. What does it comprise of? It comprises of the classes, classes of amphibia represented by frog, reptilia by the snakes, aves by birds and we ourselves are a member of class mammalia. If we compare ourselves, aves and mammals we are warm blooded, rest are all cold blooded animals, but where is the class spices? This spices is again subdivided under two, uh, three headings. What is it? One is ostic thighs. Ostic thighs they are the true fish and they are also known as bony fish. They are riverine fishes found in the river, sweet ones. Chondric thighs, chondric thighs are cartilaginous found in the sea. They are salt water fishes, they do not have scales their mouth is subterminal and uh, of course, uh, you find uh, swim bladder is there, swim bladder is not too prominent, but, but uh, uh, there is another class cyclostomata which also consists of marine elements, marine fish like structures, but they are different from them. Why? Because they are jawless fishes, jawless fishes we call them lamprey they act as suckers, they move round the fishes. So, that brings us to the end of this animal kingdom. Hope children you like the entire story of animals. Thank